On the previous episode, I backpacked in Banff National Park where I encountered some challenges at Faro Peak. On this episode, I pick up right as I get back to my vehicle and I head north to a secret van life spot I got a tip on. I had no idea how amazing this spot truly would be. I'm gonna head into Canmore now. I think there's an Anytime Fitness there. I need to have a shower. Before we head out, I just noticed there's a giant dragonfly on the ground and I think it's dead. It's not very uh, often I have access to film such a magnificent creature, so check this out. So this is a dragonfly, but let's get the macro lens out. Wow, look at that thing. Amazing. A sad resting place for such a beautiful creature. Leaving Sunshine Village, I headed back to Canmore to get that shower before heading back into the bush. Anytime fitness here, I have my shower. <laughs> I went and tested the doors because they were locked. I tried to open one, it was locked. I tried to open the next one, it opened, but there's a guy half naked in there. I'm like, yeah, I mean, you should lock the door. <laughs> so awkward. So I was able to wash my clothes in the shower <laughs> all over my vehicle, let them sit out there for 20 minutes each side and they should be good to go. And that's one mini towel, two pairs of socks, underwear, pants, shorts and a shirt. I'm realizing I should probably stock up before I leave because there's some stores here in Canmore so I'm going to grab some more vegetables and stuff. Heading northwest to Banff and eventually Jasper, I realized this would be the first time i had been back to Jasper in over 20 years. There's nothing quite like driving through Banff and Jasper National Park. Majestic mountains on both sides. It's one of the most memorable drives anyone can do. Leaving the highway, I head north, upwards through the top part of Banff and towards Jasper National Park. The highway road turns into single track lanes going both directions. This is where it feels truly remote as you'll lose cell reception as you drive deeper into the backcountry. Massive mountains line both sides of the road along with majestic bright blue lakes. I just pulled off at the Hector Lake lookout. There's actually a better spot to see the lake along the road, but I don't think there's anywhere to stop. You just have to look from your car, but uh, there's Hector Lake. That's a beauty of the lake. And up there, I believe, is the Waputik Ice Field. It's a big glacier up there. I think there's a traverse that starts down there and that goes up here and then through the ice field that way. This guy just parked. He's going down some mystery trail. Maybe that goes all the way to the lake. I don't know. I'm just going to go find a nice uh, place to chill out for the rest of the day and do some editing and relax. The deeper we head north into the backcountry, the more rugged the mountains became. I just been senior editing, relaxing, made some good food. Uh, I was been feeling pretty tired today after that 29 kilometers yesterday, so I just decided to get a little bit of time off of shooting stuff and just focus on editing. And it's pretty pretty nice out here. And let's do something a little bit different here. Let's do some night photography, huh? There's something so primal about standing out in the middle of the night, taking photos, knowing I'm fully exposed to everything around me. Morning, it's the next day. With that, I've got my solar panel set up here. 
I just got it leaning on the back and it actually hooks into my uh, my recovery boards there really easily. This is producing about 60 watts um, and my laptop is burning, it averages between 40 and 80. So right now my battery's going down slowly with me working in there, but it definitely prolongs your life out in the woods. I got my laptop set up here right now and it's time to head on the road. We're gonna head up towards Jasper, but first I'm gonna try to recreate an old timer mountaineers photo from I think it's 1905 of Crowfoot Glacier. So I've got the spot marked on my map where I think they're standing and then which direction they're pointed. So <laughs> we'll see if I can actually pull over on the side of the road. There's definitely some uh, some obstacles <laughs> in, in doing this project. To be able to recreate these old timer shots, I first looked around on Google Maps trying to find the right angle. Then I started putting points down on the map. The first stop was to pull over on the side of the road and check my position. I just tried to pull over to get a shot of this glacier, but it just I didn't have an angle of it. So hoping for another spot coming up here. Oh, there might be one right here. There might be one. Let's just pull over here. Can I see the glacier from here? I don't know. While the angle was getting closer, I was still far too low to see the glacier at the same height. So that's the glacier right there. I need to be much higher and I need an opening. So I just pulled over to the Helen Lake uh, trailhead here and uh, you guys gotta come check this thing out. Look at this beast. This thing is a tank. Wow. I don't even know what that is. All rad 4x4. 1023. Bim build. What is this thing? It's got like a dog kennel on the top there. It's so tall. Fuel tanks. I'm not trying to peer inside. Just want to take a walk around. Look how tall it is compared to this uh, Toyota here. That's outrageous. <laughs> That thing is absolutely outrageous. Oh, that would be pretty cool to be driving around in that thing. So I'm looking for the, the a little bit higher spot to get to match up that Crowfoot Glacier. I'm on a higher spot now. I wonder if it's here or if there's a there's a trail that goes up behind me here. I gotta, I gotta grab my other lens and I'll check. See, it was down there before. I might have to get up higher. So that's Crowfoot Glacier. It must be so great then. While this is a good view of the glacier, it's still far too low to be the same angle of the old time mountaineer's photo. I decided to go up this trail, there's the start back there. I'm gonna head up to the spot I've marked on my map where I think the old timers took this photo, so I'm pretty sure it's up here. It's only gonna be about a kilometer up, not too far, and it's a good test for my lungs after that 29 kilometer day. A good test for my legs. <laughs> Water. I'm having a problem getting up to the viewpoint. Some people bushwhack this direction. The other way is to go this way, multiple kilometers. I don't feel comfortable bushwhacking next to a creek because that's the one place where grizzly bears might not hear you and you spook them and then they eat you. So I'm, I moved over a little bit here. I want to just get a direct line of sight to it. There it is right there. You guys see it right there? That's where I need to get on to or at least just 30 or 40 feet up. So I'm going to pick a straight line from here, maybe the next one here. I don't have my knife anymore because I lost it on my last hike, so I'm not feeling super... Uh... Yeah, let's go back to the other one. Super good about bushwhacking right now until I get a new knife. I have my bear spray though. We're going straight line this way and straight line back, or no monkey business. See, this stuff looks really nice. Okay, so we came from over there. There's a big uh, dead spruce tree at the bottom. That's a hang a right, a left to right, a left to right between a couple of trees gets us back to the trail. Now we're here. We've got a dark patch here and we've got a bit of open meadow and I see a tiny gap through here. So I'm gonna go here, hang a right and I should be able to go up. Hey, yeah, I like it when a plan comes together. Look, I don't know if I can get up this though. It's too steep. I just need to get up maybe 40 feet. I'm up uh, 10 right now, so uh, 15, we'll see, it's a little bit of a trail up here, could just be water runoff. This is the stuff of nightmares that I've been dealing with the past two weeks on the 
mountains just so steep. <laughs> Halfway up. It's scary up here. Uh, there's lots of bushes to hold on, so I'm not sure. Is that the angle? We gotta check the photo here. Pretty darn close. Oh my god. I think I got it. Look at this. Look at that. If you look at the center, you can see truly how much of the glacier has melted. While this is not the exact spot, it's very close to where the old timers were standing. There's still a slight difference in the angle and the focal length. But getting it matched up this close does show us how much our world is changing in just a mere hundred years. This is pretty darn close to where that old timer was standing. The only difference is like the trees you can see are um, bigger in my shot, but that's because it's a hundred years later. You can't, you can't judge it on the trees. There's a bit of like a rock hump. So I wonder if it is, they're standing up there. Maybe perspective just changed so little. I'm going to head down. I got to go down all this now, which is not fun. I was looking at potentially going up there and then trying to cut through and up. It's just getting so dangerous. I'm sliding around. This will have to be as close as it gets for that one. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe. The weird thing is if they're standing on that rock up there, there's trees up there. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're on a rock higher above it. I don't know. Or maybe just these trees all grew in. It's hard to know. So I was just over there. I decided to bushwhack towards us. We come over here. There's that, there's that creek from before. Honestly, that was a little rough <laughs> on the hands, at grabbing just all those branches and the young pine trees and stuff. They're, the needles are not soft, they're sharp. So you just cut into your hands. There's like a ton of them drilled in my hands right now. I came up over here more, I think right here. This meadow, yeah, yeah. To be here and then hang a right. Now round we have round and dosy do. There she be, the trail. Yeah, that's the very top up there, that giant tree. I don't know if it was taken up there, if it was taken halfway up. Well, I'm gonna give myself the official check mark on that one. Oh, Crowfoot Glacier. Pretty darn close. And uh, that was a nice, fun little adventure. Continuing down the road, I'd come across multiple bright blue lakes. Wow. If I've ever seen a roadside attraction in my life, Bow Lake, wow, the color just gets you. Right. See, it's busy. So this feeds the Bow River. Absolutely beautiful, but let's uh, continue this on. There's a whole bunch more lakes and stuff. The next stop just down the road is Pado Lake, one of the most popular bright blue lakes. So I tried to park at Simpson Lodge, which is that big red building on Bow uh, Lake. And I swear half the people in Jasper must be at that place. So many camper vans, so many can of dreams, so many car alarms. So Bow Lake is the bluest lake that I have ever seen, ever. So I'm kind of curious about this Pado Lake. It looks equally as blue on the map. This is the steepest trail. I would not want to push someone up a wheelchair in that. Here it is, a tourist viewpoint. <laughs> Definitely not alone up here. <laughs> At this point, you guys know this is basically my nightmare. <laughs> There's a little trail underneath I might go down. See if I can get away from, uh, yeah, you can see some people down there. <laughs> I've gone around now. It's too many. It's too many people up here. You gotta find your little piece, piece of paradise by yourself. This place is an absolute zoo. This is basically what hiking is, except it's more rewarding when you hike up and then you get a view like that versus go to a parking lot and walk in, but still beautiful. Let's head to the next one. This drive through Jasper is unreal. It's unreal. There's glaciers in every direction. 
big amazing mountains in every direction the mountains look different there's one of the coolest looking mountains right behind these trees i think there might be a little trail let's see we got to get at least a shot of this thing because you can see it from the road but there's nowhere to take a picture of it it's a little trail this trail goes all the way down to this lake over here i'm feeling a little exposed i don't have my backpack so hence i don't have my bear spray wow this is better than uh peito <laughs> Are you kidding me? Look at this. Are you catching this, guys? I still find it a mystery why rock formations, glaciers, scenes of nature speak so much. We are inherently wired to seek out places like this, to be in their presence. Nothing humanity creates will ever be as impactful on the human soul as the beauty of nature. <laughs> this is unbelievable! Are you kidding me? Look at this! This is one of the most beautiful places ever! There's not a soul here, they're all at Pado! <laughs> I don't know what this lake is called, but I'll put it on the screen right now. Wow, I don't know if you're allowed to put a tent down here, but wow, this would be a spot. This would be a spot. I'm a peak bagger, but wow, I can really appreciate this. You're getting a lot of uh, value for, for easy uh, mileage here. If you look over there, right kind of there, there's some, some sort of canoe or kayak or something, some people over there. Behind me here, look at this cool looking peak. It's got this weird little sharp doohickey on it. I love finding hidden little treats like this. There's no plan. I don't have any internet. I'm just winging it. You know, I looked up a couple places before I left the internet zone and you got no connection back here. So I'm just like, huh, pull off on the side of the road. Nobody's there. Perfect. Oh, there's a little trail. Let's go down that. Oh, it's an incredible world-class set of uh, lake and mountain glacier combo. Little did I know as this day went on that the views would continue to get better and better. a little ways down the road I'm a little bit further along here I think this is uh, waterfowl lakes I think both of them are waterfowl I'm not exactly sure but you can see that same glacier is right here with that same peak but I was just further that way As I head north to Saskatchewan River Crossing, a small community, I would head east to the public lands for some epic wild camping. So I just made it to the Saskatchewan River Crossing and I thought there was going to be no gas all the way to Jasper and I was planning, I'm going to go up to um, Klein River, uh, which I hear is a big time van lifer kind of place. So there's gas here though, uh, apparently up the road, I haven't gone yet, but it's up there somewhere. I think it's Horse Haw Viewpoint, something like that. It's right over the bridge, it's Saskatchewan River uh, crossing. Wow. Look at the water down there. So green. Just big mountains everywhere. Look at this giant glacier up there. There's glaciers on all these peaks. One, two, three. This is absolutely unreal. It's very windy. So at Saskatchewan Crossing here, they have gas that's uh, full service. You just roll up, they pump it, you go up to another booth and pay. And it's $2.17.9, so 218 <laughs> for gas. So it's 40 bucks for about a third of a tank. In Canmore, it was uh, $1.50. So there you go. I joked with the guy, it's like Vancouver Island prices. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the middle of nowhere, what do you expect? I really should have brought you guys in this uh, general store. Inside there, I'm not judging them, but let's just call it what it is. I have these 
these packages of uh, peanuts and raisins and that kind of thing I buy from the dollar store for $1.25. They're selling them in there for seven bucks. Like a bag of chips is like three dollars, four dollars. Yeah, you better stock up, don't buy things out here. It's expensive. Let's head up to the Klein River and um, the lake up there. So the road all the way from Saskatchewan River crossing all the way out to the end of Banff National Park was being paved, so it was really slow. But it was a very good thing because as soon as I got out of Banff, there's a big sign there that says welcome to Banff going the other way. There's another sign saying welcome to public lands, let's go fly the drone. gotta be kidding me this campsite look at this big big shout out to my brother for the tip on this one check this out look where I'm parked this is free 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 use public land are you kidding me dude this is wild this is wild it's free <laughs> this is amazing. Wow, there's so many different types of uh, mountains, rock formations around here. Can you tell that I need a, a shield for my uh, jet boil to cook? <laughs> I got some rice noodles here, a, a packet of instant rice, which I had to use up. I know, weird combination. I got mushrooms, green peas, wax beans, garlic, ginger, salt, pepper, and, and soy sauce. That's awesome, soy sauce. So it looks like a lot of food. It's about 1,400 calories. I haven't really eaten a meal today, so. Mmm, mm, that's good. The sun is just on the verge of going behind that mountain. See, these guys are all in uh, shadow now and I've got the last little bit of sun here. Bust out my camp chair, enjoy my meal, and then I'm gonna go into a multi-hour uh, editing session and just kind of enjoy the landscape here for the evening. As someone who's van life from Vancouver Island to Alabama and back, and then out to the Canadian Rockies, this is the best wild camping spot I've ever come across. There's something really special about this area. It's not just the crisp air coming off of Abraham Lake, the fresh scent of spruce trees. There's a sense of belonging and peace not only with nature, but with the people around me. A common goal, a common shared love of nature. This is one of those moments I feel like I found my people. Well, I didn't go out and socialize the nearby campers. We're all there sharing the same common beauty and relishing the tranquility on display.
As the sun began to set, my eyes were delighted with bands of blue, pink, orange, and yellow. Being in a place like this, at night, has a certain calmness, a stillness to it, a feeling that's hard to explain, a sense of everlasting peace. The light crackles of a campfire and laughter can be heard in the distance. As I snapped photos in the dark, some abstract, and some that are just right. Mm -hmm. 